Robert Hubbard has the night off. I am the spirit of Mardi Gras. Fat Tuesday tomorrow. They're already partying. In New Orleans. This is Cooking Vamp 96. 96. Now, uh, we're going to talk Mardi Gras. We're going to talk Fat Tuesday. Uh, we're going to talk New Orleans with Ron from Clean Drop Mobile. But first, a little, uh, a little uh, chat about our sponsors, Cellar Angels, number one, the best wine even uh, a spirit can enjoy. All right, small vintners in Sonoma, in, in California, in Napa Valley, delivered to your door, wine you're not going to find on any store shelf near you, most likely. And they use Manjo Wine, and they're going to take care of the shipping, one case to a bottle. So fill, uh, please visit CellarAngels.com. Also, if you're in Chicago, spring weather here, right, in Chicago, unbelievable. And uh, Chicago helicopter experience, loving the weather, flying people around. Mention Manja TV and get 10 bucks off your flight. You know, the, the latest and greatest uh, app out there is Whammy Live, all right? Whammy Live, if you are a band or a music producer and you want to make sure you get your fair share of the door, check out Whammy Live. You know, you can't go wrong with technology. Now, technology got me last week, and I am pretty sure technology's not going to get me this week. That's why I left it to the spirit world, all right? The spirit world to take care of things and make sure that uh, everything works accordingly. And if it doesn't, I can blame the Marty, the spirit of Mardi Gras on this one, all right? I love it. I'm all hands and face. That's it. All right, let's see what kind of technology we got working. And uh, let's bring in my friend Ron from Clean Drop Mobile. And we're going to chat a little, a little Mardi Gras. Let's just see. Hello, technology. Ron! Bob, what's up? You can hear me? You can hear me. I can hear you. Uh, you can't see me, but neither can anybody else because uh, I gave Bob the night off, and I'm coming to you as the spirit of Mardi Gras. Uh, <laughs> so that's what people get to see, just uh, some hands floating in free space and uh, a little Mardi Gras mask. And we're gonna, let's talk a little New Orleans, a little Mardi Gras. You know, I'm going to be there in another month. Uh, I always hit, you know, New Orleans after the madness has subsided. But you know as well as I, it really never subsides on Bourbon Street. Uh, the madness is always alive and well there. And if you're going to New Orleans now or in the coming weeks or in the fall, whenever, I got a few uh, top places and I know you do too. So uh, you want me to jump right in and, and, and talk uh, New Orleans? You go. I mean, let, let's, let's go with the expert who's about to be there. <laughs> All right. My number one place that you have to go to, that you have to go to in New Orleans, is the Acme Oyster House. Now, remember Acme was, uh, you know, in, in the Roadrunner, right? Acme was always the explosives, and, uh, right? The TNT was always from Acme. Coyote is my hero. Right? Now, the, the Acme Oyster House, it's, 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 uh, it's really well uh, named, I guess, because I'm talking the most incredible oysters on the planet. Now, oyster, you say oyster, schmoyster, whatever. I'm telling you, these are fresh, awesome oysters, and I don't know how many they go through, but they put them over a hot fire, over like a coal fire, and they flame these oysters in a butter garlic sauce, and they go through, I mean, the poor oysters. Somebody should be legislating about how many oysters get demolished in this joint. Because Acme is like, you know, it's a flavor kick to the mouth, these things. You go in there with eight, ten guys, you can take down some serious amount of oysters. So, I don't know if you've ever been. Uh, have you been to the uh, the oyster, the Acme Oyster House? Been, been there. What, uh, not during Mardi Gras, but the uh, uh, jazz festival. Yeah, all right. No, I, I, remember I, I, I remember I was in New Orleans. I was told I was there. There is photographic evidence somewhere. But, you know, once you get there, it's hard to have a memory. <laughs> exactly. All right, so my number, new, my number two place, uh, 
And uh, I same thing. Uh, I was shocked, as a matter of fact, when I looked today to find the name of the place. All right, it's called the Clover Clover Grill. All right, and they, oh. it's like a greasy diner, and they do burgers underneath a hubcap. All right, so they get the onions oh. going. And they have all these hubcaps that they throw down and, and put over, like, you know, 57 Chevy, like like some serious hubcaps that they use uh, to keep all the juices and flavor in. And uh, I was shocked because when I was there, I could have sworn it was several blocks off Bourbon Street. But yeah. no, in, in fact, it is on Bourbon Street. So uh -huh. I, mu I must have, like, you know, been looking for it, and we must have stumbled off of Bourbon Street. And then made our way back on, and uh, you know I couldn't believe it. when I saw Bourbon Street address. I'm like, wow, the, you know that was three in the morning because I could have swore I was, uh, you know, well off the street. And my last place, not a shocker, Cafe Dumas for the chicory coffee, the beignets. I mean, if my top three are those three for sure that you got to hit. What do you got for me, New Orleans? That your must go to places. Well, um, I'm going with what the uh, was it Aunt Hattie's for the fried chicken, uh, which you know unfortunately gets on every Zimmerman Bourdain show, but it is a go-to. It's a must as far as I'm concerned. You know that that's the first stop. You know you get there whether it's plane, train, automobile. You know before you have any hurricanes, you go get the chicken. You know move that forward till you're fat and full. Then you find you know O'Brien's. Get yourself a couple of hurricanes so you get right. And uh, you move forward, but I gotta find that uh, place that does burgers on hubcaps. Now, I have a question. Yeah. Do they have, do they have a drive-through? <laughs> like I said, no, they don't. They don't. And it's it's a it's a legit diner with a bunch of seats. And I swore it was three or four blocks <laughs> off of Bourbon Street. And I'm just shocked now when I look it up. I'm like, oh my god, it's it's actually right on Bourbon Street. Well, I'm thinking all those hubcaps. There's got to be a car somewhere, you know. Right, exactly. In fact, yeah, it, it used to be a drive-through. That's how they got all their hubcaps back in the fifties, right? It's like a, it's like a Michigan Midwest road. That's how you get hubcaps. Exactly. All right. You know, I know we always spend a little bit of time talking food safety, and for people visiting New Orleans this weekend, not unlike a lot of holiday weekends, I know that you uh, that when we talked. The uh, incidence of, uh, of foodborne illnesses decreases a little bit, and tell us a little bit about why that is. It's, it's tough to find foodborne. I mean, food, you know, and it's not that food safety increases. It's just they start going through food so fast, it doesn't have a chance to expire, get past the sell-by. It's in and then made and out. So, I mean, you're dealing with fresh, and it's that, that makes the entire difference. Um, you know, the other part is, is if you can't... Uh, find something you're happy with, you just eat gumbo. And, of course, gumbo's cooked, and that's just good. Right. You know, there's no doubt. <laughs> I can't wait to get to the south for gumbo, for uh, the oysters, and for soft-shell crabs, which are in season. Uh, oh. You know, the soft-shell crab thing back, you know, we're going to Biloxi, Mississippi, as we do every year. And uh, I start quivering, like, in the next week or so, my body will start quivering in anticipation of, the soft shell crabs at uh, Mary Mahoney's in Biloxi, Mississippi. If you're if you're anywhere near, you must stop in there. All right, Ron. I know that we got the the NCAA tournament coming up. Incredible NCAA season so far. Um, let, let's chat a little bit about that. What are you seeing so far, and why are you excited about this year's uh, NCAA tournament? I mean, it, if you follow it, you've got to look at Gonzaga on a on an undefeated run and go. Who's going to stop them? They're talking over the weekend about they need to have a loss so they come back to earth. I mean, I, I think we've all experienced those football and basketball teams where they catch that loss and then they suddenly feel like they're human. I mean, I, Gonzaga, I think, should just go all the way and run the table just, just because they're that good. I mean, but there's been some close games. I mean, this weekend was just filled with them. Um, you know, you, you look at Duke and and North Carolina, and all of these teams are the perennial. I mean, look at the fall from Grace Kentucky had. Right. Um, I think it's I think it's going to be a fantastic March Madness, probably one of the best we've seen in a while. You may have to go back six, seven years to, to see something, you know, where you see a Georgia Tech come back out of the pack and, and just run the table for a while. Right. Um, I, think, I, I think that's there. Um, of course, for us, it's just busy as all get out. 
Um, you know, there's a colloquial term from the, from the north. Busy as all get out. What does that mean? It, it, anyway, I mean, there's, you know, 16 uh, sites to start with. So at 16 stadiums, all of all of the uh, food establishments, the sports bars that are close by, so it's it's just pulling up health grades, asking for inspections. It goes from 16 to 8 to 4 to 2 to 1, and it's a long couple of weeks, but, boy, is it fun. Right. Um, I know. So mention some of the cities uh, out there that are that are experiencing uh, March Madness firsthand. I know Milwaukee's got a regional, and I know the finals in Phoenix. Where else are, the, are, are people going to be able to see it firsthand? I, I pulled it up into uh, sit there, and you can't memorize them all, unfortunately, because I'm not that bright. But um, <laughs> I'm just calling as I see them. That's what people tell me. You know, the spirit of Mardi Gras appreciates honesty above all, especially. Uh, but, as Lent approaches, you, you know you, you got to have those hurricanes to get through because I think that also maybe cuts down on the food poisoning. Now, Doctor Steuben from Dining Grades is not going to say that a hurricane will cut down on food poisoning because he's a doctor, and I don't think he's allowed to say that. But um, I mean, we're looking at uh, you know some really fun sites that I've absolutely just lost. But anyway, oh let's see. Okay, here we go. Uh, Tuesday, March fourteenth. Uh, we got Milwaukee, as you mentioned, Orlando, Salt Lake City. Uh, then we move into Greenville, Indianapolis, Sacramento, and Tulsa. All so, right. um, you know, that's that's the other part too is coordinating with like Buffalo Wild Wings. You know, the people at Applebee's, Chili's, Fridays, wherever you're going to show up and eat those wings. Right. That's we want to. That's where we want to make sure that you know you may be sick about your team losing. But it's not about the food you ate. Right. You know, I thought that it would be fun to, you know, we love bracketing things up at Maja TV. You know, we bracketed up sliders. We bracketed up wings. We bracketed up meatballs. The very first thing that we we uh, we talked about when we pushed the pilot for Maja TV was bracketing up uh, gravy, you know, like Sunday gravy in Chicago. Uh, oh. So along with that uh, analogy you know i think we should bracket up uh where's your favorite place to watch ncaa hoops you know and, and i got some and let's let's add to it uh you got local sports bars right absolutely everybody's got a good local sports bar the problem with local sports bars is, is like you got to get in there at like you know eight in the morning to secure a seat because everybody wants to go to a local sports bar all right you got the fast casuals that you mentioned you got the applebees the buffalo wild wings the chilies the TGIFs. I got kicked out of a uh, Chili's one time uh, with two young children, but that's a story for a different vamp. And actually, I didn't. Robert Heffernan from Manja TV did. Not the spirit of Barty Gras. Never would have happened to him, right? How about on your couch as another one, right? How about on your rich uncle's couch? I mean, I always love going to Super Bowls or NCAA parties at a, at a rich relative that had, you know, had it going on with the food and drink. Let's not forget that. That's always that's always a good place to go. All right. And then yeah. my, uh, my last category is uh, uh, one of these fast casual places with a hundred dollar gift card, you know, yeah. or a fifty dollar gift card or a twenty five dollar gift card. I, I, I'm ready to go to one of those joints. So uh, well, hey, the, go ahead. Yeah. Well, the, the ESPN, when they got Dickie V, you know, at, at Hooters. You know, going, come on in and get some wings. Can you imagine watching, you know, the Sweet 16 with Dickie V at a Hooters? <laughs> I mean, I would love that only if they promised me that Dickie V would let it come off the hook a little bit. You know, nothing well, from the teleprompter. I'd love to hang out with Dickie V and, and let him be Dickie V. Absolutely. Right? I mean, my, my other thought would be, as I know you throw out the rich uncle thing, but, I mean, what about if Miller Lite did something like, you know, uh, a little thing with where you're out in a deserted field with an ancient Winnebago and a satellite dish, you know, and and, and that's where you're going to catch March Madness. But they drop off beer every day, you know. They could they could actually you know Amazon could use that as a segue to deliver beer via drone. <laughs> and I got to tell you something: the technology now with the uh, projection, uh, mm -hmm. the projection TVs and stuff, uh, or the you know, I'm all for that. I, I go. The bigger, the better. I mean, I had a 15-foot screen back in the day with the projector. Nothing better than HD projected on the wall. That's, mm -hmm. that, that's for sure. All right, Ron, listen, man, these are great ideas. Um, hats off to everybody that's enjoying Mardi Gras in New Orleans. 
and uh, please be safe. I know they had some problems there with uh, with some some drivers that uh, didn't know how to drive. But uh, Fat Tuesday tomorrow, right into Lent, and you know, mind your TV. I got something. I got something. Right on. Bring it on. I, I know that you know for TV you need to have a you got to have props. Okay, so let, let's just say for Fat Tuesday you got to have the push keys. <laughs> Are you kidding you me? you got to have the push keys. All right? You know what? And Come on, show me one of those things. Well, that's all I can say is earlier there was six. I I, I, I don't know what happened. There, there was six. There's one left. There's been a push There was six earlier, swear to God. There's, a, you know? there's been a push key homicide. It needs to be investigated. You know? Yeah, but you know... No great story ever started with salad, but it's, it's a good one with a push key. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, Ivy posted uh, her push key uh, homemade recipe, and she put she put it on Facebook in Polish, and the uh, the uh, the translation was hilarious, man. <laughs> Facebook does not know how to do that translation yet. All right, love it. Rod, thank you so much for dropping by, giving us your opinion on uh, New Orleans. If you're there, if you're there, make sure you get to the clover grill for cheeseburgers under hubcaps and uh oh yeah definitely <laughs> all right pal that's and, a bucket uh, list right on bucket list it is you have a great week and uh we will see you next week all right and uh man the chat i i i, I, <laughs> I send you on a task to man the chat it's always an ama on manja tv even though it's the spirit of mardi gras hosting tonight i will still answer any questions on that chat all right, pal. You have a great week. All right. See you there. All righty. All right. The spirit of Mardi Gras is moving right on to the Manja 300 Foods Challenge. Uh, Robert, now you're going to see last week he had 102. Now, I know he did more than that, but he didn't add, he didn't update his Google spreadsheet. He's a slacker. But we wanted to talk about this because your came in the mail and what's going to help you get to 300 I'll tell you what came in the mail. The seed catalog. The seed catalog came in the mail, and it's just a reminder when you get a seed catalog, how many different things are there they're out there. I mean, it's insane how many different fruits and vegetables, uh, you know, that you can grow most anywhere in the country. And you grow it at home, it's going to taste better. You feel accomplished. You, uh, take, uh, you take control of a, a little bit of that... Uh, food thing, that, that quest for food that everybody does on a daily basis. And when you get the seed catalog, it just opens your eyes to the varieties. of. It's insane how many varieties there are of all these vegetables. And they all count, all right? So uh, I'll update that list. My goal is 115. i got to add 13 new things between now and next week. And uh, we'll see how I do on that. Speaking of foods... Uh, we're going to go to a commercial here, all right? And then let's talk about it when we come back. Frank! I need rub, Frank! Go get it! Not fish, Mojo! I need shrimp, Mojo! Go get it! I forgot to teach him how to read. Hey, Frank. What do you say we dig into some shrimp? Hey, Frank. I'll rock, paper, paw you for the last shrimp. Rock crushes paw. Two out of three? All right. Scissors cuts paw. Sorry, dude. <laughs> Manja Rubs now available available on Amazon. In fact, that's the only place you're going to find them now, on Amazon, with our partner, Food Cycle Science. Hold on a second. I want to accentuate this with hand movements. Food Cycle Science. If you go to Amazon.com and you search Manja Space TV 
space spice, it's going to come up. All right. Now, you know, March Madness is coming up. I think the last time we did the, uh, the slider thing was uh, for a March Madness thing when we did the, we bracketed up sliders. I think the Cajun shrimp won, by the way. The only way you're going to do Cajun shrimp sliders is if you buy the rub. So go on to Amazon.com and buy some rub. And please, please leave a review, good, bad, or ugly, about the rub. And uh, tell us what you think, all right? <laughs> all right, listen. Last week I said that I had one more go-to song that you need to learn for the romantic dinner, all right? We, we talked two weeks ago on that, that Valentine's music. And uh, so... You know, you got the, 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 the playlist that Perry Cicchini put together, fantastic, right? Now, if you play guitar, you need a couple romantic tunes to play. The first one was uh, Waiting in Vain. I don't want to wait in vain, right? Bob Marley, uh, which is super easy. And the next one is, uh, uh, she gives me love, 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 crazy love by Van Morrison. And, and it's super easy, too. Whoa, it's not so easy if you're invisible, though. You know, it's impossible if you're invisible. The fingers just don't work. So that's going to have to come next week. i got to put you off one more week to have the two songs set that's going to seal the deal at your next romantic dinner when you play guitar. So let me get the gloves back on. All right, let me get the gloves back on and uh, wrap this thing up. Thank you so much to Ron at Clean Drop Mobile for stopping by. Listen, do yourself a favor and cook somebody a meal, would you? All right? It's real simple. You cook them a meal, they sit down, everybody, you turn the cell phones off, right? You turn all the technology off. And uh, you sit down and enjoy a, a real conversation between living and breathing humans. You know, I hope it doesn't get to a point where they actually say that, you know, people used to just get together, sit down, hang out, eat food, and just talk. I mean, that's what they used to do. Let's hope it never comes to that. All right, listen, you guys have a great week. We'll see you next Monday uh, on Cooking Vamp 97. I think we're going to bracket it up next week uh, for March Madness and, and talk about Maybe a couple recipes to uh, make the March Madness party a super success. All right? You guys have a great week. Roll them credits. How'd I do it? Did technology get me this week? I don't know. You can't. You, it, technology, it's a moving target. You never know until uh, the re-edit. Here we go. Come into my kitchen, babe. I'm gonna fix you something to eat. To eat. Bye.